I'm Emily. I do hope that you're all keeping safe and well. At this time of year, I'd normally be travelling around the country visiting flower clubs far and wide. But today, through the power of the uh, internet, we shall be coming to you through your television screens and sharing with you a few Christmas designs. So I hope that what we create today will inspire you to have a go at home and decorate your homes ready for the festive season. You'll see that I've made a start and those of you that may have been involved in Canterbury Cathedral Flower Festival many years ago may recognise the beautiful earthenware bowl that I'm using as the container. It was one made especially for the Flower Festival. And into the design already you'll find a structure of dogwood, the Cornus Alba. Many of you will have this growing in your gardens I'm sure. Throughout the year it's covered in leaves and sometimes flower but at this time of year through the winter months the leaves will come away and it will expose the beautiful coloured stems and these do come in a variety of shades right the way from pale pale pinky white through the oranges and greens into the deep reds and burgundies. In complete contrast to the vertical lines of the cage structure at the top some rather lovely aspidistra leaves. So these are the aspidistra elatial, the cast iron plant. It's famous in Victorian times. Many would have had them in their homes as a house plant. So I've created a frill or a ring of the leaves and using the aspidistra, I've got some areas of enclosed space. And to do that, what I've done is to take a leaf and then it's got quite a long stem on it at the moment but I don't need that full length of stem so I'm just going to cut it much much shorter just leaving myself about an inch at the bottom of the stem and then very gently fold the leaf back on itself and with the sharp piece of the stem I'm going to pierce that through the leaf so that it pokes through onto the other side. And then I've just taken a small pearl headed pin, woven that through the leaf so that it's holding it securely in place. And you'll see that it gives me that wonderful area of enclosed space that we're looking for. And then I can place these directly into the foam. Now, if you're thinking that these leaves are much shinier, much glossier than the ones that you've got, that's because I've given them a little squiz of leaf shine to enhance their colour. If you don't have that product at home, don't worry. Uh, what we can do is just use a baby wipe. Baby wipes are full of lanolin and they will help give your leaves a lovely shine. So if you've got some unexpected visitors that turn up at your house, and you think, oh bother, I haven't cleaned my house plants. You can quickly whiz around with a baby wipe and they will gloss beautifully. Similarly, you can just put a piece, a piece of kitchen paper and then you put a little bit of vegetable oil onto the kitchen paper, wipe that over your leaves and you'll get the lovely gloss, the shine that we need. So the frill has now gone right the way around the bowl, giving us a lovely edge, just shadowing, creating a little shadow over the earthenware bowl, but not hiding the beauty of the earthenware pot. And as it's Christmas, what better material to be using at Christmas time than some holly. And this is gorgeous, variegated holly. And look at the berries that are on it. The birds obviously haven't found this bush just yet because in time they will come 
and they will devour these beautiful red berries thinking that their Christmas dinner has come early. So we just want a few shorter pieces of this holly and thankfully this one has got a lovely soft edge to it. I do have another variety at home which I call Ilex. So all the hollies are part of the Ilex family and I call it Ilex chicken pox because when you use it, it's so prickly, it gives your hands little red spots as if you've got chicken pox. So just recessing, so I'm not coming beyond the frill of the aspidistras, but just taking a touch of the variegation of the holly and exposing the gorgeous red berries into the design. So already we've got some repetition of color. So the, the red in the dogwood has already been brought lower down into the design, picking up with the gorgeous red berries on this variegated holly. So just a little touch of red right the way through the bottom of the design. So it's a few flowers that we need to place in. And of course, at this time of year, the gorgeous red flowers are what we love to use. And what better flower at this time than the velvet of the Naomi rose. Beautiful, large, they're almost cabbage-like, the heads on the Naomi roses. Beautiful long stems on these ones. And apparently it takes about eight weeks for the flower to go the whole length um, that we've got here. And so I'm not going to be cruel. Quite often in demonstrations, a demonstrator will show you a beautiful long stemmed rose and then go and cut it short. And you think, well, what a criminal thing to do. But I'm going to keep these quite long to start with and then just weave them following the line of the grid work created with the dogwood. And with the framework, I've tied the pieces together using paper covered wire. And it is a little bit time consuming, but it is worth it. If you can try and make sure that each of your tie points are secure, but also that each of your tie points are uniform so that they're all tied in the same direction. So for a demonstration piece, it's not quite so important. But if you were going to use this technique in a competition at some point, then the judges will always keep an eye on you to make sure that everything is as perfect as can be. So I'm placing them into foam, placing the roses into the foam and just making sure that you can see the depth of the design. So each of the roses has got its own little bit of space and no one is hiding the beauty of the one behind it. And the foam that I'm using, um, if you look closely at the foam, I have just chamfered the edges slightly so that it makes the area that I've got to use that much larger. So just a little bit of um, chamfering on the side of the foam will make sure that it exposes more space for you to work with. So starting to fill the caged area with the gorgeous red Naomi Rose. Now in contrast to those velvet petals of the Naomi Rose, we've got the soft ruffles this time of the Dianthus or a carnation. Again, beautiful red colour, so very festive, reds and greens. You can't go far wrong with those colours at this time of the year. So this one, quite contemporary in style. We're not following a traditional triangular shape in any way. The material is being placed in in pairs. And just following the line of the caging and taking the different textures of the flowers down in pairs. It's a bit like Noah taking his animals onto the ark, isn't it? Taking them two by two. So most of the stems I've cleaned free of any foliage. On the roses, I've left just a few pieces of their 
greenery but we don't want it to interfere too much so the stems have been cleaned and sometimes you get you may be lucky enough to be given a bunch of roses and by the next day the heads are a bit flop and you think well what on earth have I done wrong they were in clean water so why on earth should they have flopped over and what you might find is that your roses have got an airlock in their stems and so the best way to get rid of the airlocks I'll just turn that so you can see that the materials have been repeated so we've got the groups of roses and then the groups of carnations and we're slowly starting to bring the colour from the top right the way down to the bottom of the design. So if your roses do get an airlock in them at any point then you need to give them the hot water treatment. Now it sounds very cruel but I'm sure I assure you you are doing the roses a huge favour. So what you need to do is to put the kettle on and get some boiling water. You need two jugs, either two Pyrex jugs or two containers in which you can place um, so about an inch or so of water. So get your container, an inch or so of boiling hot water in the one and an inch or so of freezing cold water in the other. And then cut your roses, just cut a little bit off the bottom of each stem, place them into the hot water. So their base, their bottoms are about an inch or so into hot water. Leave that for a minute or so. And then you take them straight out of hot, turn them around and put them straight into the cold. And then almost in front of your eyes, you will see that their heads coming straight back up. So the hot water and the cold water treatment is releasing the air that was locked in their stems uh, and making them free flowing once again. And as my mum often told me, if you jumped from a hot bath into a very cold bath, you too would stand up tall like a soldier. So standing tall like soldiers is what we've managed to do with the roses and the carnations here. And so now we just need to build up a bed of interesting textures at the bottom of the design. And to do that, I have got some gorgeous pine cones. So I'm lucky enough to work with young children at school. So on our nature walks, I always task them with finding me some cones. And so on a recent walk out, they came up trumps with some beautiful large cones. And what was even more special about them is that these are called Pinus kebab stick. I'm not sure if you've come across this variety before. They come with a kebab stick growing at the bottom of their, of their cone, which makes it quite easy and very useful for us flower arrangers. So I'm just going to sneak these right at the base. So we're going to squeeze ourselves into the middle and using the stem, the spike that the cones have come on, we can just place them into the foam. So without too much fussiness at the bottom, we are covering the base of the design. So the pine cones, you'll see beautiful contrast in texture between the peeling as the pine cones open and the soft petals of the roses and the carnations above. And as these are pine cones, they do need to sit in a bed of pine. And so uh, a complete change and contrast against those aspidistra are the sharp needles of this pine. So we'll just bury a few pieces of the pine very low down. I don't want the pine to interfere with the flowers in any way. They're just giving us a background, covering the mechanics, but just giving a background for the pine cones to shine through. And it's all starting to feel very festive. We've got the reds of the roses, the variegation of the holly, pine cones and berries. It really is beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. So just a few more pieces of the pine 
to go through. And as we've got holly, what other material do we use when we've got holly at this time of year? Um, in that famous song of Christmas, of course, the holly and the ivy. So we've got some gorgeous ivy berries. So at this time of year, the ivy berries will be at their very, very best. And so it'll be rather nice to just again recess a few of these into the design. So picking up, we've got the holly berries and now a few of the ivy berries as well. So just take a few of the gorgeous hedera leaves, the ivy leaves. And so we've got a, more or less a nice base made up there. And so just a few other decorative pieces to go in. Some Christmas baubles. So I haven't gone for anything too shiny. I've gone for a velvet texture, which will repeat what we've got with the roses up in the design. So a velvet sphere. Um, demonstrators that are watching this, you'll know that we're not to, allowed to refer to baubles as being balls, because that's very rude. So these are spherical shapes that I've covered with some velvet material and then just giving them a little bit of glitz with a piece or two of the golden bullion wire. So just popping one or two into the back as we go along. So we've got a lovely mix of textures and of colours right the way through the design. And then just to continue our repetition of groups of two, just a few more pieces of the dianthus or the red carnation that we can sink very low down into the design. So we've got the baubles and then on the opposite sides to those, some of the gorgeous frilly dianthus. Dianthus or carnations, very popular as buttonholes many years ago, but they've sort of fallen out of favour and we find that it's roses and little bits of nothing really that brides tend to choose for buttonholes these days. But we've brought that mix of colours and textures right the way through the design. And then I've just a few extra pieces that I'd like to add in just to make it a little bit quirky, a little bit different. And so I've got a few of the Anthuriums. Now these are um, quite famous in the flower arranging world because nobody believes that they're actually real. When you look at them, they look as if they're plastic. They look waxy, but I promise you they are real. And so we've got to encourage people not to actually touch them too much because it's through touching them that they pick up dirt and grime and grease. And then that marks the head of the flower uh, and it becomes um, damaged and it will start to fade away and degrade very, very quickly. So again, just using a few small pieces of the paper covered wire, I'm just going to take these in a totally different direction. So they're not in foam at the moment, but that doesn't matter because they will last for a few days out of foam. If you're going to make this as a long-term piece, then I suggest that maybe a test tube or something is added to their, uh, the end of their stems. But at the moment, and for, for the purposes of this design, they'll be just fine as they are. So just wrapping the stem and giving it a twist with the paper covered wire. And I've chosen to use a green color. So hopefully you won't see it too much. It sort of disappears into the design. So we'll just wrap those around. So we've taken two across on the one side, a little bit different. And so we'll just take one or two the other way just so that things don't feel left out. Let's just 
it now shows at this point when you're starting to add in your your whizzy bits that you need to have made sure that right at the start that structure that you made was secure before you even started and I am the worst I was at the very back of the queue when patience was given out but it does pay to be patient and take the time in the very beginning to get things right um, and then um, they won't uh, fall apart at this stage. So we'll just tie our last anthurium on. Not everybody loves anthurium lilies. They're sort of a marmite flower. Some people love them, some people dislike them. And they're not the easiest of flowers to work with. You've got to really let them do their own thing, really. Let them flow the way that they wish to go. So we'll just pop a last piece onto our final anthurium and before I turn it around for the final time this is the holly that I mentioned right at the start Do you remember I said about ilex chicken pox so look at the prickles on this unbelievably sharp um, but very good as a security material so I have it at the side of our property and I often think well if burglars came to the house there's no way that they get past this to get anywhere near the house if they were going to break in. And what I've done is just to take some individual leaves off the stem and then I've threaded them onto bullion wire so that they are hanging freely. And then that will just allow the holly that was in the base of the design to be used right at the top without being in any way actually heavy or visually heavy. And I'm not sure whether you realise, but the Ilex chicken pox has got some very clever berries. They don't grow in clusters as they would do on normal plants. These ones grow in straight lines. I spent a little while yesterday threading them, threading individual holly berries onto the bullion wire. And when I was doing it, I thought, I do need to find some better things to do with my time. But they are quite contemporary, quite quirky. And they just do allow for the berries that are in the variegated holly at the bottom to be used right the way through the design. So just one or two hooked onto the tops, like hanging washing out to dry, hanging the berries out on our frame. So I'm hoping that you've enjoyed the first design and I shall see you again very shortly with something else. But hopefully to start us off the festive colours of Christmas. So I thought for my next piece, I would share with you just a little table centre. We always need something on the table at Christmas time. So how about something like this? You'd need a jolly great big table, I know. But striking all the same. So the pink sticks that you can see that are suspended on the side of the container, they are jute. So those of you that were fortunate enough to go out to India, earlier in the year that you will be very familiar with jute used for all sorts of fantastic crafting material and the flowers that I'm placing in these are rather spectacular too the curcuma but look at the color on them absolutely stunning that vibrant lavender striking on purple just blends beautifully with the cerise pink of the twigs so I'm just going to place these in all vertically to repeat the form of the jute twigs and they're going into a base ring which has already been covered in foliage. So a wonderful mix of seasonal foliages 
So you'll see if you look closely, a mixture of hedera, the ivy, and those gorgeous berries that I used earlier. Some yew, which gives a different texture, some spikes of the yew. Some pittosporum, or pitosporum as a friend calls it, but pittosporum I would say. So the pittosporum and some long trailing pieces of ivy, some pieces of uh, suppressus, the conifer, and then the spikes that you might be able to see just spinning out uh, along the sides here. They're of course the bear grass or lethal grass as we sometimes call it, because if you should run your fingers along it, you'll get paper cuts that are very, very sore. Although it is a good excuse not to do the washing up if you've got bear grass paper cut hands then when you come to do the washing up, it does get very, very sore. So you'll see that the curcumas I've placed in at varying heights, like musical notes going along a page. They give us some interesting pieces to look. There's no start, there's no finish. Your eye just flows right the way around the design. So just one or two of the last pieces of curcuma to pop in before I will share with you the flowers that are going to go right at the bottom. So the curcumas are giving us our interest high up. And then to go towards the bottom, a gorgeous mix of flowers. So again, some dianthus, but this time gorgeous cerise pink color. And as I bring out these various materials, you'll see how their colors just work so gorgeously well together. The rose, now this one is called just the job, because when I saw that, I thought that is just the job for what I'm going to do here. But you can just see how the color scheme is working together. All shades of that beautiful pink. And then from the garden, a few pieces of lavender hebe. So it's always lovely to be able to use some garden plant material in your designs as well. So I'm just going to pop a few pieces of each of these in the design. So I'll put a small group together and then I shall turn it so that you can see it's like a tapestry effect that I'm aiming for. So just a couple of the roses, a couple of the carnations. Again, no set pattern, just weaving them through at various points and then if I just turn that so you can see the little cluster that has started to form all the different colours and textures that are sitting quite nicely against each other. Now I'm going to build that band right the way around the ring. So you can go and pop the kettle on while I just do that and I'll see you back here in just a minute. So welcome back and you'll see that I've placed while you were away I placed in the carnations and the roses, keeping them all very low down, so not interfering with those curcumas at all. And you've just caught me as I was placing in the final few pieces of the gorgeous lavender hebe. So I'll just pop the last few bits of the hebe in. This is a lovely shrub to have in the garden. And as you can see at this time of the year, full of flower. And so the, the last of the bees and the wasps that are about, they will enjoy going along to these and picking up the last few pieces of the pollen of the season. So as it is a Christmas table centre, we need a little bit of sparkle to give it a bit of pizzazz. And so I've got here some gorgeous different Christmas baubles. And again, I've popped these onto kebab sticks for ease of placing them into the design. So lots of different colours, lots of different textures of bauble. So we've got some with bits of glitter on them, others which are more of a matte texture, but colours that will just fit and sit nicely into the design. So just weaving these through, not wanting them to be too obvious, just giving us the different colours and a little bit of Matt Christmas magic as we go along. And if you look closely at some of the jute sticks here, just as another little bit of interest, I've glued on just a few tiny little buttons. So I had them in my workbox 
and I thought, oh, they would be something of a, a bit of interest. When the guests are sat at the table, they could look through the different elements that are in the design and find all little interesting bits and pieces that they hadn't realised were there the first time. So a few of the baubles to go in. So I've placed those right the way through and then I've also got some smaller ones which I've suspended onto wire and then we can have these just dangling so that the elements of the design are repeated and the baubles are just giving us a little longer line coming right the way through the foliage and hanging down the front of this piece. Pop you in. So just a few of the baubles that will hang at, in a group at the front there. And to add a little bit of magic, one of my favourite flowers, the gorgeous Gloriosa lily, Gloriosa Rothschildana. Just be careful with the little pollen pockets that are on these. So if you brush past them, you may well get a little bit of pollen onto your clothing. And our natural instinct, if we've got pollen, is to inst uh, automatically sort of brush it away if you can. And that's probably the worst thing you can do because that's just going to brush the pollen into the fibres of your clothing. So apparently the best thing you can do is to hoover yourself. Now the chances of you and a Gloriosa lily and a hoover being in the same place at the same time are fairly slim. So what you need to do is just resist from touching that pollen on your clothing. Leave it a minute or two till you can find some sellotape and then you ever so gently just dab your, the sellotape onto the pollen and it will just lift off your clothing. No problems and no staining. So with the addition of a Gloriosa Lily, hopefully we've got something rather spectacular for your dinner guests to enjoy. hopefully you've finished your table centres and then it's time to decorate the Christmas tree and so I've made a start on my Christmas tree and I was very lucky recently to be gifted this tree so what I've done to is attached some pine and some eucalyptus and then a few pieces of the contorted willow just to take it right the way through add a little bit of interest to it and then there's some test tubes suspended, so no foam in this design at all. So just to give the tiered effect and to link each tier to each other, I'm going to place in a few pieces of the amaranthus, the Love Lies Bleedings. And this is that gorgeous lime green colour. Now this I have growing in the garden and it grows like a weed. Once you've got it in the garden, it's pretty much with you for life. And for some reason, the one that I've got has decided that it's a runner bean and it always pops up in the vegetable garden. So I planted it um, about 10 years ago, I think, and it stayed with me uh, in all of those years. Each year, without fail, it will pop up somewhere in the vegetable garden. I think it's worked out that that's where there's the most water and it's a, probably a good place to be. So just the trails of those glorious clusters of the amaranthus coming down. And then to carry on on the green colours, those gorgeous shamrock chrysanthemum blooms. They look sharp, they look spiky. Their colour is sharp and their, their petals look spiky, but they're actually very, very soft. So we'll just place a few of these into the test tubes again. So little groupings of flowers. So we've got 
the amaranthus, we've got the chrysanthemum blooms. Let's just pop another one or two of these in so you can see the effect that I'm aiming for. And then just to add a little piece of interest away from all green. So in addition to the pine, I can just smell, you won't be able to smell it down your televisions, but I can smell as I'm turning it, these sort of pine scents of Christmas and also pieces of the eucalyptus foliage, which I've attached on. So some lovely scents and smells while I'm working. And then one of the most beautiful roses that's used, especially in wedding work, the white Naomi. Gorgeous, large white, blousy heads. Very, very popular with brides in the summer. So I'm just going to pop a few of these into the groupings as well. And so I'm going to do that on the various tiers of the tree. So catch back up with me in a minute when we've made a little bit more progress. So you join me just as I'm about to place in some gorgeous snowberries. Now I risked life and limb to get these yesterday. It was tipping it down with rain, but I knew just which hedge I'd find them in. So there's something that grows in the wild and I've removed most of the foliage off the stems so that we just get the beauty of the gorgeous white berries. Aren't they just lovely? They do go a bit squishy after a while though, so just be careful if you're going to put these on your Christmas tree arrangement. That They last a little while, but they won't last forever. But they just add a little bit of interest in amongst the roses and the croissants and those gorgeous amaranthus, the Love Lies Bleedings that I've popped in. And if you're wondering what the other white flower is that you can see, some beautiful white dahlias. Uh, one of my favourite flowers, I think, during the autumn season. They come in all shapes, all colours, all sizes, and they are just so useful for flower arranging. Absolutely gorgeous. They're just such a harvest flower, but all the different shades and colours mean that they are available pretty much throughout the year um, in all sorts of gorgeous colours. So the snowberry is joining all the other materials in the test tube. So I've already put a little bit of water into the tubes and just working out which tubes I've got a little bit of space left in so that you can just see how the clusters of snowberry work so well. Lots of different textures. We've got the hanging shapes of the Love Lies Bleed and the sharp spikes of the croissants and then the rounded shapes of the snow berry. And then I've got here with me a pot plant. This is Ripsalis, a succulent, maybe even a cacti, but lovely, interesting pieces. They're sort of dinosaur-like, aren't they? Alien-like. But you can just tear off a few pieces and just pop those into your tubes of water. And if you left them in water for long enough, then they'd actually root and you'd be able to breed more plants. So it's become very popular as a material to be used in flower arranging. So Ripsalis, and it grows very, very easily. I just have it in pots on the kitchen window. It gets watered when I remember, um, which is not that very often, but it doesn't have to have lots of water. It sits quite quietly on its own and enjoys direct sunlight. But just drizzled over the top of other flowers, you can see the veiling effect that you can create with some simple materials. And in an earlier design, I used some pieces of bear grass. And this one is a special one that only comes out at Christmas. It's bear grass, obviously. And this one has got some berries on it. And you're thinking, well, I haven't seen bear grass with berries before. And that's because if you look very closely, these are actually pearl beads that I've threaded onto the bear grass so that we can just have that little bit of glitz and glamour in our Christmas tree design. So just a few pieces of the bear grass with their 
pearl beads can just again drizzle across the front of the tubes and the other materials. So just pop those through. So I'm just bending their stems ever so slightly on the bare grass so that it does actually drape across the design. We don't want them to be sticking out and poking anybody in the eye as they come along. And then as it is Christmas, we'll have a few baubles hanging on the tree. So not too many. We just want to add a little bit of interest in. A little bit of sparkle to brighten our Christmas days. So, oop, not wanting to stay. Pop you on. There you go. And one at the top. So the one thing that we need to go under the Christmas tree, of course, are our presents. So as I turn my final design, may I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And I'll just leave this for you to enjoy while I place my presents under the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. 